ಚಿತಿಣ ಯಾಕೃತ್ಸ್ನಮೇತ್ಯಾಪ್ಯ ಸ್ಥಿತ ಜಗತ್ ನಮಸ್ತ 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 ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ನಮಸ್ ಸರ್ವೇಭ್ಯ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಎ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಐ ಆಮ್ ವೆರಿ ಆನರ್ಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಹಿಯರ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸ್ಟೇಜ್ ಐ ಮಿಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಇಂಟೆಲೆಕ್ಚುಯಲ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸೆಷನ್ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಫಾರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಇನ್ ದೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಡೇಸ್ ದ ಆನರಿ ದ ಆನರೇಬಲ್ ಗವರ್ನರ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ವಾಟ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಸಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೀಕ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಮೆನಿ ಡೈಮೆನ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಯೂಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇನ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಕಾಂಟೆಕ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಬಟ್ ಟು ಎಕ್ಸಾಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ದಟ್ ಟು ಬಿ ದ ಹೋಲ್ ಸಮ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ವೇರ್ ವಿ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಮೇಕ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಮಿಸ್ಟೇಕ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಗಿನಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಲೈಕ್ ಟು ಟೆಲ್ ಯು ದಟ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಐ ಯೂಸ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ಫಾರ್ಚುನೇಟ್ಲಿ ಅಂಡಸ್ಟ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆರ್ ಇಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಧಾರಯತೆ ಇದೆ ಧರ್ಮ ಧಾರಣಾ ಧರ್ಮ ಇತ್ಯಾಹು ಧರ್ಮ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ದಟ್ ಹೋಲ್ಡ್ಸ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ದಟ್ ಕೀಪ್ಸ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂ ಸಜೆಸ್ಟ್ ಅ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಆ್ಯಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಇಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಸೊ ಯು ಸೀ ಇನ್ ಪಿಕ್ಚರ್ ದರ್ ಅಸ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಟಾರ್ಚ್ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಶೋ ವಸ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಸೂರ್ಯನ್ಗೆ ಟಾರ್ಚ್ ಆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ಹಾಗೆ ಸೊ ದ ಟಾರ್ಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಡೂ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿ ಬಟ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೂ ವೆರಿ ಬ್ರಿಲಿಯಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಟಾರ್ಚ್ ಟು ಶೋ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ದ ಐಡಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ವೈ ಆಮ್ ಐ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ವಿ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಹವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಟಾಕಿಂಗ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಡಿ ಕಲನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಡಿ ಕಲನೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲ್ಸ್ ಥ್ರೂ ಸಂಬಡಿ ಎಲ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಡೂ ಸೊ ಟ್ರೈಂಗ್ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಭಾಷಾ ಥ್ರೂ ಸಮ್ ಫಾರಿನ್ ಟಂಗ್ ಏನು ಈಗ ಮಂಕುತಿ ಮನಕಗ್ಗನ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಹಿಂಗೆ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದಾರೆ ದೇರ್ ಸೋ ಮೆನಿ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿಫುಲ್ ಕನ್ನಡ ಪೋಯಿಟ್ರಿ ವರ್ಕ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಹವ್ ಬೀನ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ನೋ ಡೌಟ್ ದ ಗಿವ್ ಯು ದ ಕಂಟೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟು ದ ಫೀಲ್ ಟು ಅನ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಬಟ್ ದ ಗೇಟ್ ದ ಗೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೋಯಿಟ್ರಿ ದ ಬ್ಯೂಟಿ ಆಫ್ ಸೌಂಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಪಿರಿಟ್ ಡೆಫಿನೆಟ್ಲಿ ಕೆ ನಾಟ್ ಬಿ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಲೇಟೆಡ್ ದ ಸೇಮ್ ಹ್ಯಾಪನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಸೊ ಐ ಪ್ರಿಫರ್ ಟು ಯೂಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಟ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಮೆಂಬರ್ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರಿಲಿಜನ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ವಿ ಸೀ ಇನ್ ದ ಇಂಗ್ಲೀಷ್ ಟೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಬುಕ್ಸ್ ಧರ್ಮ ರೆಫರ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಸಿಸ್ಟಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಋತ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಧ ಧರ್ಮ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಥ್ರೀ ಲೆವೆಲ್ಸ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಕೋಟಿಂಗ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟ್ಲಿ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಅವರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ರಿಪ್ಚರ್ಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಥಿಂಗ್ ವಿ ಡೋಂಟ್ ರೆಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿಕ್ಸ್ ದ ಭಾರತೀಯ ವಿದ್ಯಾ ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ಬೌದ್ಧ ಇಟ್ ಕುಡ್ ಬಿ ವೈದಿಕ ದ ಆಗಮ ಜೈನ ಆಲ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಬಾನ್ ದೇ ಆಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಬೈ ದೀಸ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಸೊ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಪಿಕ್ ದಮ್ ಅಪ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಟ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಋತ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾ ಋತ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕಾಂಪ್ರಹೆನ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವೇ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಶುಡ್ ಬಿ ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಸತ್ಯ ದ ವರ್ಬಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪ್ರೆಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ಋತ ದೆನ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅ ಆಕ
to understand how one should live in, uh, in great uh, harmony with the whole of existence. The whole of dharma, you know, um, before we go into the details of dharma, we should understand that uh, in our Bharatiya uh, context, life itself is divided into four dimensions. Everything about life, all actions, all endeavors, all aspirations, anything and everything is uh, packaged into four things. Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. They are called the Purusha Arthas. Purusha, Purushasya Artha. Artha means um, intention of life, it means wealth, it means resource, it, it means many things. It also means a system. So, uh, there are two things, Artha and Kama, which we all understand. Today's uh, education, uh, heavily a copy-paste from the Western module, is all about Artha and Kama. Kama is desire wants, desires, needs, aspirations, greeds, everything comes under kama. And artha is a support, a supply to that, the resources, the human resources, the material resources, the opportunities, uh, anything and everything which supports, which caters to our kama is artha. In simple terms, in economical terms, we can call it supply and demand. So the run towards supply and demand is what we think is today success. But sometimes we see in the newspaper, we see on the television, how a very young, rich uh, techie who was having a six-digit, seven-digit salary uh, jumps off a building and commits suicide. This happened in Bangalore about 10 years back, and uh, in his uh, coat pocket was a small uh, chit, which read that, I'm frustrated and bored with the monotony of life. I have everything, but I'm bored. Imagine in a happening city like Bangalore, a rich, uh, what we call successful was there, success was there with him, but something was lacking within. Why does this happen? Because just artha and kama are not life. There is this guiding factor called dharma, which regulates artha and kama. Sri Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, dharma viruddho bhutos, uh, kamosmi bhutanam kamosmi bharatar shabha. I am the kama, I am the desire, aspirations, etc. in every being which is regulated by dharma. So to desire for anything and everything is not the way. There's a very bad uh, development uh, these days we see called individualism, saying I, it's my life, it's my wish, it's my money, it's my right. So uh, we forget that the word my is very dangerous. Uh, we, uh, to claim that one is absolutely unconditionally independent is the biggest myth, it's the biggest stupidity. Because we all have used ladders to come up. Our parents, the system, resources, people around us, our friends, relatives, teachers, the education system, the government, everybody and the beautiful ecology around us. We have used them today. So we have used many ladders to come up and we can't claim to be independent. We all are indebted to the society, to the system. So to frame our karma through uh, into dharma is very important. Similarly, artha, to use resources. Today we see, particularly in the urban uh, world, you go to a marriage hall, you go to some place, uh, how we waste food, how we waste water. And when we walk out of an auditorium or a classroom, if we are the last persons to walk out and the fan is going and the lights are uh, still on, do we care to put them off at all? Uh, it's not taught in our schools, right? But I remember when uh, in my grandma's house, we had a well. I was a uh, lad, uh, we, we had a lot of fun uh, drawing water and pouring it back to the well. My grandma would shout at us, no, don't pour it there, pour, pour it into the tank or elsewhere. We would say, why? She would say, look, the well is our property, but the water in the well is public property. Once you have touched the water, you know, you might have, you might have contaminated that. So you, can, you should not pour the water back to the well. I did not understand then, but now COVID has come to teach us what it means. We understand it better now. So that sense of samashti pragnyam, the sense of dharma, appropriateness, appropriate use of resources was very greatly uh, taught in our uh, uh, system, in the Gurukula Paddhati, to live in minimum. There's a very beautiful saying. Uh, it seems there was a saint who used to go to his friend's shop every day, sit there and uh, uh, ask, what is the value of this object, this object, this object, but, but, but would buy nothing. One day his friend asked, why do you ask the uh, value of everything when you're not going to buy anything? 
So then that saint said, uh, I'm tell, I tell myself every time I ask you the price of something, how many things I can do without. So how we can reduce the uh, intake, the usage of resources to the minimal and get the best benefit of life. This is real wisdom. It's not use and throw and lavishly uh, misusing or abusing resources. So, dharma, artha, kama. Ha, you see the triangle there. One of my Sanskrit teachers designed this uh, for us to show how dharma should be the base on which artha and kama should be built. And they reach a point called moksha, absolute fulfillment, absolute peace, happiness, joy. And if the arrows are going downwards against dharma, if they are adharma-wise, then there is no way they converge. That explains how there are so many uh, spoiled brats in the society, corrupt uh, people, corrupt politicians, corrupt businessmen, corrupt uh, bureaucrats, who, are, who have everything under the sun but still are not happy. Their greed has no end. That's because it goes against dharma. But anything we earn, we, that we, any resource that we deservingly get, that gives us a lot of joy and peace. And if I have 10 rupees, I feel like sharing a part of it with somebody else who has just one rupee or nothing. So this is the sense of uh, fulfillment, the maturity, the openness, the purity of conduct that dharma teaches us. So this is the idea of value in the Indian uh, context. Indian context, value is not about just a set of some ethics, this, 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 this. No, that is the Western style. Unfortunately, that is what we study in the moral science books. So we are, we can't come out of that trap. But uh, this is what they conceive. You might have heard this word repeatedly, purushartha, purushartha. Kanardar helti vyava purushartha ke and helti tivi. Dharma artha kama moksha. If we understand this, Everybody, every moment in life, the Ruta Satya Dharma, the cycle of Ruta, comprehending Dharma and verbally uh, implementing that, then implementing in action. This should happen cyclically and this will keep us absolutely on track with the Samashti. Uh, dharma is a, has two dimensions to it. One is the uh, Samanya Dharma, another is the Vishesha Dharma. Samanya means universal. There's a set of some ethics, some uh, ideas which are very important and they are for everybody at all times. Uh, ancient times, these times, in future, for, for men, for women, for children, for the older, for all religions, all communities, everybody, anytime. They are called the Samanya Dharma, the universal Dharma. That is truth, purity, and love, and uh, forgiveness, etc. Then comes a Vishesha Dharma. That is specific. My role here is that of a speaker. And back home with my kid, I'm a mother. My role as a wife with my husband, my role as a daughter-in-law, as a daughter, as a citizen of India, in the bank, I'm a customer. So my role changes according to place and situation and the need, my duty, etc. That is called Vishesha Dharma. So, the idea of dharma says that your Vishesha dharma is your Vayaktika, your personal dharma. It should always compromise to Samanya dharma. This is the major difference we see between the Indian born systems and those which came from outside. Uh, so, uh, Vishesha dharma is once Vayaktika dharma. Our, uh, uh, a person's uh, obedience to his guru, his book, his religion, his cult, his lifestyle, dress, whatever. Of, of course, it's very important to him or her, but not at the cost of the Samanya Dharma, not the, at the cost of Samashti. If I want to uh, eat a banana, I do eat, okay. That's my personal wish. But where I throw the peel becomes my Samanya Dharma. If, uh, if some stupid person wants to smoke, it's his Vayaktika, it's his desire, okay. But he should not smoke in a place where other people who don't want to are also made passive smokers. That is against Samanya Dharma. So these are, there. I can go on and considering time, I'm just keeping it short. So this idea of Samanya and Vishesha Dharma, what is my duty, my personal duty? And that should always be uh, very sensitive to the Samanya Dharma. This is how you should proceed. This is how we should proceed. So this is what we see in Ramayana. Rama, Rama 
uh, went to the extent of uh, extent of sacrificing his personal life his joys his personal whims and fancies and wishes everything so that he protected the samanya dharma and he was at peace with himself to us it may appear like self denial i've heard many youngsters why youngsters even older people say oh ramas was about self denial self denial but we forget that if a leader is ready for sacrifice there will be a rama rajya around if rama and sita were selfish they would never have been the concept of a rama rajya the rama rajya comes because the re- leader is ready for sacrifice so uh, these are some very beautiful uh, ideas we see in our uh, heritage so samanya dharma always should have a higher place in our life and samanya and vishesha dharma all of them together should always cater to something called the samashti pragna samashti pragna is a universal consciousness so if i say something here on the stage i can expect the word to go anywhere anything i do here may affect somebody somewhere a, a virus was uh, unfortunately born or created somewhere in a lab of uh, china what hap- happened across the world in every home almost we have seen so we have no right to say that no i don't care it's my life my liberty my intelligence my words my action will definitely have something to do with the samashti so the samashti pragna is very important keeping the samashti pragna in mind our samanya and vishesha dharma should uh, go and this much if we understand everything else will fall in place i will not speak lies just to have my way why do we speak a lie instead of telling our children speak uh, speak truth be honesty be honest be speak the truth etc and they will listen and they are bored about it we know how bored they are we are also bored we also hardly do that but if i understand the concept of samashti pragna and my duty in this uh, huge uh, creation all these will automatically come i will not speak a lie just to have a, a trivial job done easily i will not uh, have a vyavahara under the table i'll not uh, do all that i will not um, betray my country i will not betray my culture i'll not s- sell my soul for some trivial uh, benefits so all this will come very naturally so this is the idea which the dharma shastras present dharanat dharma ityaho hu dharma is a dharana is a system that holds people in place holds everything in place i'll give you some simple examples how dharma was implemented in every village every home there's so many examples we can go on with simple examples i'll give you you go to uh, religious places where we have this teertha snana where we take bath in the rivers at least in karnataka i've seen that uh, there is a rule that you should never use anything which kills the aquatic life there so we use simple besan ka aata hai na kadle hittu and a turmeric and some um, uh, herbal material as soap okay and uh, they will never affect the aquatic life there okay but today in the urbanized uh, life we see our uh, youngsters or we go picnicking somewhere and how we use shampoo and soap and spoil the uh, river waters and then we say are yaar india bahut ganda hai yaar ganda kisne kiya you know and we blame we say these people are uneducated no please don't say that i travel a lot and i've gone stayed in villages they have the highest sense of hygiene just because they uh, dress very deshi and speak in kannada or a deshi language and they are very simple we better not think that uh, they don't uh, think they know much more than us they know much much more than us and i have seen in our village homes in our homes also how nothing is wasted a piece of cloth is not wasted it is used in different ways everything is recycled this the, the concept of zero garbage kitchen which is coming up today was always there in india because they respected resources for us resources prakriti is lakshmi it is not about using this god created man and man, god created this whole creation for the upabhoga for the pleasure of man this is not how we go we say that god is a whole of has manifested as creation and i'm just a small speck here i better be aware of that this is how we should live this is what our dharma teaches us matru devo bhava because mother is a 
source of my existence today. Pitru Devo Bhava, Acharya Devo Bhava, Aditi Devo Bhava. Somebody comes home, I should keep aside my personal tasks and take care of them. Samashti Pragnya, Samanya Dharma. Because I will be in his place someday, sometime, somewhere. I will really want somebody's help for me. A typical Indian home, meals start after giving food to everybody. Many people still follow that. People who did not study in the convent schools, but in Canada medium schools, and still practice that. That is, uh, when you cook, the, uh, part of it is given to the crows, to the domesticated animals, and we have a small stone uh, um, uh, basin kind of thing in front of the house. These days we have removed that. It doesn't look good in front of our houses, right? It's been removed. But we have water there for the uh, street dogs or cows to drink. And in summer we have more water, more food to give, and no home starts its meal without giving food to everybody, all the older people, the deceased people, the kids, the guests, etc. And only then they start. Is this not dharma? This comes with the idea of samashti dharma, samanya dharma. So this is how the Indian land has grown its system. This is how we have konda janagalanu bandhu vindu karedantha bharata desha antha hartare. A poet from North Karnataka sings. Uh, we, we have managed to Embrace, we have managed to uh, assimilate even those people who came with swords. We have tried to uh, digest everything and still go on. No looking back, just go ahead. That is the strength, that is the mental strength which dharma gives us. There's a very beautiful story in the Upanishads that uh, everybody has to find out their own, uh, through the Ruta Pragna, find their own uh, path of dharma. Once the devatas, the uh, human beings and the Dhanavas, the demons, they all go to Brahma. They're all the children of Brahma only. They have their own problems. So Brahma is very busy, he's a creator, so every moment he has to create millions of worlds, according to the Puranas. So he, his appointment is very short. He gives just few seconds appointment. And those few seconds, what advice he gives is very, very important, very, very valuable. So all the three go, they sit before him in meditation and mentally they ask him questions. The devatas ask, look, we, are, we have everything under the sun. We have all the bhogas, all the pleasures. We have the most beautiful women, the rich, all the riches. We have kalpataru, kamadhinu, all that we have. But we are not happy. Something is lacking. So why this? Give us a solution. Then the human being said, we are also quite happy, if not as rich and uh, affluent as the devatas, we are also happy. But somehow we are not. We have everything, but we are not kind of satisfied. Then the Dhanava said, even we have our own uh, so many lands, we have so many worlds, we have everything, but we are not satisfied. So Brahma opened his eyes for a second, and in two seconds he uttered one syllable. He said, Da, and went back into meditation. And the three meditated upon the syllable Da. This is an Upanishadic story I'm telling you. So they, when they meditated, they got the answers. So the devatas got the answer, Dhamma, control your senses. Just because you have 100 rasagullas, if you eat all the 100 rasagullas, we'll land in a hospital the next day. Control. Don't indulge like beasts, control. That is the answer they got. And that really worked for them. And for the dhanavas, the demons, they are very cruel, you know, because they are intolerant. The right word intolerant can be used for them. They can't tolerate any diversity. Anybody who thinks differently, anybody who has his or her own way, is happy uh, by their own. So they are always cruel. They want to kill, loot, all that. All, all that the colon, colonial people did to us is nothing but dhanavatva. So they got the answer, dayadhvam, shodaya, love, be compassionate. Be tolerant. Then the human beings, we all, we all must be curious what Brahma said. Huh? He says, dana, give. <laughs> Tada, give. That's what we can't do. Huh? Because, you know, you want to give away something in charity, you have to do it immediately. If you, uh, if you postpone for a day, the next day you feel, no, I think I need this. This is how the mind works. So to give is a very big challenge for the human being because we always want to accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. So give, share, share is what he tells the human beings. Such a beautiful thing. I think these three values, to give, to control, and to forgive, 
to have compassion. These are three great values he gives to three sets of beings. Brahma gives. There are many such stories. There are stories in the Mahabharatam, there are stories in the Ramayanam, and there are stories in the Puranas, hundreds of stories, hundreds of folk tales from Buddha's life, from his stories, from the great uh, Jaina Guru stories, from the Sikh Guru stories, from our own Basaveshwara and Sharana stories, from our own Haridasa stories, from our own other saints, from our folk stories, people who live around us, our grandmas, our grandpas, our lifestyle. See our festivals. Does a single festival begin or end uh, without dana? Nave holge madko nave tindu mugistiva habbana. Does a single marriage, even the marriage of a very poor family, does it end without giving somebody some food, a small feast at least, at least um, without sharing sweets? So give, share, share, share. So life is about celebration and giving. We give and celebrate, not accumulate. So. We are here to realize dharma. So this is a beautiful concept of dharma we have seen in our uh, Indian heritage. And uh, as offshoots of these, if this is the trunk, this is the tree, the tree of dharma, the fruits and the flowers and the leaves are all little, the small ethics called values, which we call values today, they come naturally. But you have to pour water not to the leaves or the fruits, but to the roots. The roots lie in the concept of Samashti Pragna. They lie in the concept of Ruta Satya Dharma. This was taught in our Gurukulas. That, that is why we could produce people like Chanakya, Vidyaranya. We could produce people like Buddha, Shankaracharya. We could produce people like uh, Basaveshwara. We could produce wonderful people who could, uh, who could think ahead of their uh, people. They could think ahead of centuries and uh, have a, a beautiful road map for the whole society. They could bring beautiful solutions to most threatening problems. That's because they were brought up in that mold of dharma. So this is the dharma pragna we need to bring back. Unfortunately, to even mention the word dharma, people pounce upon and say, you are saffronizing, you are that, this, uh, the patience to understand what it conveys, what it stands for is very important. Today, words, the, uh, I, um, with due respect to English, but still, as a Sanskrit person myself, I understand the ocean of difference between the English words and the Sanskrit words. The haste in uh, interpreting or translating Sanskrit words is the biggest uh, mischief maker in our path of understanding of our own culture. So I always say in almost all sabhas here also, I'd like to request you with folded hands, of course, learn English, learn any other language, but learn at least one desha bhasha properly. If possible, learn Sanskritam. If you know our desha bhashas and Sanskritam properly, you will have a first-hand understanding of what we are. We don't need a spectacle, usually a concave or a conve con convex spectacle to understand ourselves. That distorts the understanding. So have a clarity. To have clarity, we need to go within ourselves. And that is what dharma teaches. So this is, this is what is taught in our parampara. This was taught in our gurukulas. And this is still taught in the Indian homes. Unfortunately, this is not taught in this true spirit, in its holistic way, in the schools and the curriculum. NEP is one small attempt towards that. So let's understand that a lotus cannot become successful by trying to be a jasmine. A jasmine cannot become successful by trying to be uh, some other flower. A lotus has to become a better lotus and a jasmine has to become a better jasmine. There's no point in just aping the West, just trying to become somebody else. We have to become ourselves. We have to emperor ourselves. We have to unfold what we have within us. It is our DNA that has to manifest in all glory. And trying to become somebody else is not, the, is not success. So I think this is um, the very important uh, aspect that dharma can teach us. Uh, dharma teaches us to go within, develop the ruta pragna. We sit up in the morning on the bed and have the ruta pragna. That is why we have the morning sandhya vandana, evening sandhya vandana, puja, pranayama, japa, tapa, festivals, now and then. Why all that? To just stop the rat race, stop just running blind, give some time to yourself, observe your breath, observe your thoughts, observe yourself, your actions, your speech, become your own guru, become your own, become self-introspective, cleanse yourself, cleanse your words, cleanse your speech, cleanse your mind, your thoughts, and understand what is the ruta of this world. How does nature work? 
how does life work what is best for me what is best for everybody what is my vayaktika vyashti dharma that can support the samashti dharma and not create a havoc in the samashti dharma so in short this is uh, what i'm trying to present here so there's many beautiful sayings please we'll just run through the slides many beautiful sayings from the different uh, Upanishads, you can have a look at them. Uh, so the Yagnival Kesmati, Adharva Samhita, Mahabharata, all these and the Upanishads, they talk about dharma. They talk about annam nanindyat, annam bahu kurvita, never abuse food, never abuse water, respect the environment, respect the people, respect people, uh, love people. Uh, uh, and the samandha between Guru Shishya, we all chant the Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Ubunaktu. Uh, it's such a beautiful thing. When we start something, when we start a study or food or anything together, we chant that saying, Saha Viryam Karavavahi. Together we shall uh, uh, practice, today, together we shall benefit, together. Tejas Vinau Adhita Masu, let our Adhena become glorious. Ma Vidvishavahai, let us never hate each other, dislike each other. So, such beautiful uh, Shanti mantras, Vasti mantras, Shlokas, Subhashitas, Kannada the Gadagalu, Hindi ke Muhavre, they're all there. We only have to stop, look back. I think we are, we have a big beautiful treasure of uh, values and treasure of the dharmic understanding of life, of country, of role, uh, my personal role, my role towards the society, everything. It's a time-tested, seasoned uh, heritage we have. All we have to do is learn Samskritam, learn the Desha Bhashas and go and read them in original. Then if you want, we can translate it to English. But that is the first thing we think we, we want it in English. Yes, sir, English, English mein milta hai kya? They ask. <laughs> And somebody else has uploaded it there. The outside viewpoint you get, but not the insider's viewpoint. So please keep connected by getting unplugged from the culture and lingual riches. Uh, we become alien to our own culture and that should not happen. That is happening, unfortunately. So let's connect back to ourselves. Swastha, swasminstha, to be established in oneself is swastha. The word swastya, health, comes from that. To be in harmony with oneself. If our desha, dharma, culture, ourselves, our role, our whole ecosystem has to be swastha, well established in itself, ha uh, harmonious with itself, in harmony with itself, we have to first connect to ourselves. We thank Prabuddha Bhartha for this uh, beautiful opportunity. And this beautiful morning, I got to listen to such nice things from the elders who spoke here. And um, it's always my pleasure to speak about something close to my heart, that is my desha and dharma. And that to, to such an august audience here. Uh, thanks once again. Namaste. Bolo Bharat Mata Ki. Then how you differentiate between ethics and value? I think value is more of a consciousness. It's more personalized. Ethics relates to a profession or a work or a job or a task. That's a broad way I can put it. Uh, but rather, ethics or values, they all start with how we view. So I think perspective is most important. With that done, um, we understand uh, the role of a moral thing or ethics, values, everything uh, properly. So uh, ethics, mostly that is how I view it. Like something, uh, you call it professional ethics, teaching ethics, all that. Uh, civic ethics, all that. Value is uh, more of understanding uh, why th that is done. Madam, respecting our heritage and safeguarding it is also a value. In Indian context, as we all know, in many cases, it's not happening. I need your comments. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's also happening, madam. I don't uh, agree that it's not happening at all. Uh, I think it's not there on the TV and newspaper all the time. <laughs> the good things that are happening are there. Uh, we need the media to be more uh, positive, I feel. No, especially for mm. the uh, tangible heritage, mm. for our built heritage we are seeing, mm. how pathetic our monuments are, how we have yes. been neglected. Oh, that way, yes, right. Because of the lack of sense mm. yes, of Yes, yes. Yes, I lived in England for some time. What I noticed was, even if there's a small uh, piece of a wall, some old fort wall broken on the road, there will be a beautiful uh, a fence around that and people will take selfies there. They respect that. Here we have such wonderful uh, heritage monuments. 
uh, I think it's uh, the training, you know, to, uh, to know that Hello. it's gold, it is most valuable, it is our pride. The pride element has to be really infused with, with all the big <laughs> vice chancellors. Yes, of course, everybody is doing their job. I think every teacher, I am also a teacher in the classroom, at home, parents, teachers, we have to fill that pride in our uh, children, you know. This is my nation. I may be poor, I may have problems, I may, but still I have every reason to be proud. So I should be, if there is somebody who is not proud of one's own uh, identity, we are not proud of our identity, we feel um, uh, like, uh, oh, if my destination is only America and not India, then what hello, happens hello, is, uh, you know, I'll never hello. have pride for anything, not for my parents, right. not for my heritage. What about hello. buildings then? If I have that pride, you know, uh, if I have pride in Kempegoda, then the way I view Bangalore will be different. <laughs> if I have pride for uh, Bharata, then all the heritage monuments of Bharata will become temples for me. Isn't it? Yeah, you take even our parliamentary house, our uh, Honorable Prime Minister even did pranams and entered that. That's the perspective, it's attitude. So once we have a lot of uh, respect and pride, then only we will manage all these. Uh, so we take very good care of our cars and two-wheelers. But at the same time, we are littering the roads, we are um, uh, abusing nature and we are not uh, giving respect to the monuments. It's all in the training, I think. So I, I'll just give you one small example. One uh, gentleman who was the vice president of Titan, uh, he's no more now, a very elder person, he was our friend. He was once telling me about his own experience. He used to frequent Japan now and then. Once he was traveling in the train, it seems, and. Uh, his friend actually was traveling in the train and um, there were very few people in the compartment. So he took up a seat and what do we do typically when you are in the train and there's nobody uh, in front of you? We keep the feet on the seat opposite, right? <laughs> so that is what he did. And uh, there was a lady, Japanese lady, on the other side of the compartment, quite far away. She immediately rushed there. She came and she took his feet and kept it on her uh, lap. This person felt very embarrassed. He said, no, why did you do that? She says, it seems. She said, it seems. Look, uh, this frock is my property. I can go and wash this. But the seat is my government's property. It's my national property. I can't see somebody abusing that. So this, you know, I was a very young girl. My, that uncle, he told me and said, remember this all your life. So this is the training, I say. This is just training. This is just training. I think it's there in the Indian psyche. But uh, it should be taught in schools. We are teaching our ch students to learn a bunch of English words, learn a lot of uh, technical subjects. Then, um, um, of course, uh, dress and everything according to Western standards. But are we teaching them Indian etiquette? Are, are we teaching them about our, our Indian great people? How much of information do we have about this great Vijayanagara Samrajya? So much, you know, the, the moment you tell about how they build this Samrajya, how they work for it, then the same Hampi, the same Vijayanagara Samrajya will mean much more to us. If I, when I get to know how hard my grandfather has worked to build our family, then my pride about the family will all automatically come up. To develop sense of belonging. Yes, yes, pride and sense of belonging. I think it starts with information and inspiration.